Greetings ponies and pegasus, this is the Watchful Pony here and welcome back to Watchful's Watchings. And today because my last episode was a bit shorter, I decided to do something a little special and not only make it up to you guys, but honor someone I hold in deep respect for in the analysis community. Someone that's practically a veteran member of the analysis community and will sadly be leaving us after the MLP movie. I'm of course speaking of the one and only Voice of Reason. Voice of Reason to my memory was one of the very first analysts I subscribed to and regularly watched on a regular basis. Oh sure, there was Digi, Tommy, ANY, and Paleo, the big four of the analysis community. He was former critical and far less optimistic compared to Digibo and Paleo, but at the same time he wasn't as critically cynical as Tommy Oliver and he wasn't quite as snarky as A&Y. He was pretty much his own man, or pony in this case. He was also one of the very first people to openly voice that friendship is which has its problems. Oh boy is he not wrong in that regard. This is not building up to something, shut up! And it was thanks to that video, as well as the hope of ANY supporting him, that he was able to come into his own, and become one of the big names in the analysis community. Sadly though, he will be leaving us come the MLP movie. But of course, this guy was one of my major inspirations for joining the analysis community in the first place. Without him, I probably wouldn't even be here. So there is nowhere in hell I'm gonna pass up a chance to not honor this guy. And so, in honor of his retirement announcement, I'm counting on the top 10 Voice of Reason videos. Yes, today I'm gonna be counting down what I consider to be his 10 best works. However, with as prolific as Voice of reason is, as you can imagine, there's a lot of content on other people's channels. So unfortunately, I had to make this one ground rule. It has to be on his channel. It cannot be a video on another person's channel. Because in the end, that stuff can be managed. That stuff is pretty much the content of the actual person's channel rather than a voice of reason himself. No, I want to look at the videos only he could have had the majority of hand in making. Where he did most of the editing, most of the writing, and everything else involved. Even on the collaborations. But other than that, it's free reign for any of his reviews. It doesn't matter if they're the funniest, it doesn't matter if they're the most entertaining, it doesn't matter if they're the most informative, as long as it's one of my favorites. And of course, if that previous statement didn't make it obvious enough, this is a very opinionated list. What I think is Voice of Reason's best work is probably not gonna be the same as yours. Actually, I take it back, definitely won't be the same as yours. So of course, the golden rule is in effect here. Respect my opinion, and I'll respect yours, pure and simple. But I've wasted enough time as it is. It's time to honor one of the great legends of the analysis community. We're counting down! Shout! Shout! The Top 10 Best Voice of Reason Reviews Number 10 If the number 10 spot belongs to the interesting entry in the list, then consider this my interesting entry because I can't really explain why I like this so much. Because the number 10 spot belongs to Voice of Reason's Leap of Fate review. As I stated before, I'm not really sure why I love his review of this so much. I mean, compared to his other collaborations and standard reviews, there's not really anything special here. It's not the funniest. It doesn't have the most insight. Other than finding a lot of good in an otherwise lackluster episode, there isn't much else to say about the review. But if I don't at least talk about it, this is going to be a pretty boring list. So, if I had to pick a reason why I like it so much, it's Voice of Reason and Golden Fox working off each other so well. These two just have a great chemistry together and work really well off of each other. Now, while I do feel there's another reviewer that Voice of Reason has much better chemistry with, these two probably have the second best chemistry together. Yes, even more than Silver Quill and Voice of Reason. Yeah, I just said that. You think I'm wrong? Fight me. But yeah, that's honestly the only reason why it's actually on the list in the first place. So consider this the interesting entry on the list. Shout! Shout! Number 9. You know, it's safe to say that Equestria Girls is a pretty polarizing movie. Some people love it, some people hate it, or some people are just indifferent. And of course, it was only a matter of time before the analysis community got its hands on it and started to review it. And as you can doubly imagine, it'd be pretty hard to capture the entire spectrum of how people feel about the movie, right? Right? Well, Voice of Reason says, no it isn't. Not only is this the second Voice of Reason video I ever saw, but it's also the first time I was exposed to Toon Critic. I would add Pass Analysis into that bundle, but nobody cares about Pass Analysis. And boy did Voice of Reason pick a good time to collaborate with these three guys. Voice of Reason is in the camp that absolutely despises it and hates it so much that he actually thinks it's great riffing material. Toon Critic is the one who's indifferent, doesn't think it's good, doesn't think it's bad, just thinks it's okay. And Pass Analysis is in the you will never see me this positive ever again camp. And honestly, by having each and every one of these perspectives, it makes the review that much more interesting. There is literally a view and a perspective for anyone to enjoy. You could agree with one side, disagree with another, or maybe you could interlock between all different perspectives. Like maybe you can agree with Pass Analysis and absolutely love Sunset Shimmer, but still see the perspective of Tune and Voice. Or maybe you can agree with what Tune and Voice are saying as far as the negative points and still absolutely love the movie. And because of that, it probably makes it the most balanced review in the entire MLP fandom. Something that, quite honestly, I don't think any review to this date has ever accomplished. And it's for all those reasons why this is so high on the list. Honestly, there are only two things that are 
to stop me from putting it higher on the list. One is, and I swear I'm not trying to sound like a jerk with this, but, but for being the balance perspective, Toon is way too cynical in this review. Which normally I wouldn't have a problem with, but come on man, you're supposed to be the indifferent personality. How is it that you're pointing out way more flaws than Voice of Reason? Hell, even Voice of Reason is shocked at how far you go with one of your points. And secondly, and I'll freely admit this is probably just me, but... Does Pasta seem a bit too defensive in this? It just seems like he's trying way too hard to try and justify the problems in this movie. And this is coming from someone who actually thinks the first movie's good. But honestly, those are my only two problems with the review, and the rest of the review more than makes up for it. And despite Pasta trying way too hard to justify the episode's problems, it is at least professing to see someone at least have a positive attitude towards it as opposed to the... Let's just say, less than positive reception it got before it even aired. Seriously people, it didn't even air. Plus, it's just nice to see where Toon Critic got his start on Voice of Reason. And of course, as you know, he went into much bigger and better things. And as for Pasta... Well, at least he got a moment with Dr. Wolf. Approximately two years ago. And has done literally nothing since then. That's gotta count for something, right? Now where are my saltines? Oh, there they are. Shut up! Number 8 Funny enough, the number 8 entry is simply on here simply because he makes someone actually watchable. And that's an accomplishment as far as I'm concerned, because anyone that can make the MLP equivalent of TMZ watchable has got some mad talent. Yes, at number 7, we have Voice of Reason's review of Make New Friends But Keep Discord. And now the episode isn't really on here for any of the points he makes, though most of them are pretty good. In fact, controversial opinion, it's probably my favorite review of the episode. I could even point it out the reference to The Shining, which I completely missed over my rewatchings. But no, none of that is why it's on the list in the first place. No, that's because of old bug boy right here. I'll admit why I do consider FNG our friend and one subscriber lost. I'll admit I'm not actually a fan of his work or his channel. And it has nothing to do with what he said about people or the actual content of his channel. It's just my personal taste. That being said, I really, really, really like FNGR in this episode. This is probably the best thing FNGR will ever be associated with, and I say that without a hint of sarcasm. And it also speaks volumes about Voice of Reason that he was able to put up with someone like FNGR who has a... Well, a less than favorable reputation, to put it very, very lightly. And still made this little pink-eyed bug's dream come true by letting him collab with someone who he considers one of the big names in the analysis community. Which might have something to do with why FNGR was so good in this episode. After all, you want to look good for Senpai. But yeah, that's pretty much the only reason it's on the list. Voice of reason making FNGR tolerable? I think that's a good enough reason. Number 7. You know, Voice of Reason kinda has a reputation for being the cynic of the analysis community. Someone who has a reputation for being overly negative all the time. And while I can see where they're coming from, I have to disagree with them. Why? Cause he was able to find good in putting your hoof down. Or at the very least, not completely hated like most if not everyone else that's ever reviewed it. At least the ones I've seen anyway. Not only that, but this review also takes a really interesting stance. Rather than just showing what doesn't work in the episode, it only sticks to how it could have been improved. Which yeah, reviewers should do, but that's usually at one or two points, not all throughout the entire episode. Heck, this review pretty much proves the points that there's no such thing as a bad concept or a bad idea, just bad execution. With some adjustments, putting a hoof down could have been probably the best Fluttershy episode to date. Which admittedly could be seen as a negative point, but still. But it's more than just that, he was also able to find the points that he feels didn't need to be changed that would just find the way they were. And that's just refreshing to see, even with such a decisive episode with someone who's still on the negative side, they can still find some ways it could have been improved and where it was still good. So before you say Voice of Reason is too overly critical, just remember, this guy actually said putting your hoof down was not that bad. I believe the term is, your argument is invalid. Yeah, yeah, that's the correct word, your argument is invalid. Shut up. Number 6 I'll admit, while the person on the next part of this entry list is someone I've never actually considered myself a fan of, the analysis community was hurt quite a little bit when he made an announcement video that he wasn't going to review MLP anymore. But at the very least, I can safely say that before he did retire, there was at least one thing I unequivocally loved that he was in. Ah, his Dragon Quest review. The first review I ever watched after I subscribed to this guy. And still has a nostalgic part of my heart, even if I like some of his reviews a little more than this one. Still, I can't deny that this is one of my favorites. And literally 90% of that is the chemistry between Buck and Voice. That's something I find 
find that I really like about collaborations is how much the two personalities work off each other. Maybe one's comedic, one isn't, maybe they're both serious but have different viewpoints, and in this case it's the latter one, as one is defending the episode and the other is criticizing the episode. Though funny enough, Buck's the one that's defending the episode. Maybe it's just funny to me considering I've always considered Buck a more cynical side reviewer. Someone that's a little more cynical than Voice of Reason, but not quite as Tommy Alpha. And that's by no means a negative point to any of the reviewers I just mentioned, just an observation. And unlike the Equestria Girls review where past analysis was really defensive, Buck feels very natural. This feels less like a review and more like a passive debate between friends. And that is a very nice atmosphere to have when you're doing a review. It makes it so that not one side feels stronger than the other, even if they're on opposite sides. Heck, Buck Pony actually brought up some really good points on some things that the episode did good. And with this episode being pretty much universally hated, it's refreshing to see a positive perspective on it. Don't expect the episode to get such luck from me, but still, with Buck and voice involved, this is one Dragon Quest I would gladly take part in. Number 5. I doubt anyone's gonna find me when I said it, this is probably the most serious review Voice of Reason's ever done, and considering what he had to say in this review, it's not hard to see why. Yes, this is less so much a review of the micro series and more just an editorial about criticism in general, where he not only bashes the comic for its ending moral about criticism, but then goes into an entire tirade about criticism in general and how important it can be, why it's important to form your own opinions, why it's important to not become a sheeple and just follow the popular opinion. If it's something you agree with, there's no big deal in that, but don't automatically follow it just because some big reviewer says so, or just because the vast majority says so. That this micro series personally insulted him as a free thinking human being. Like, wow. I don't think a reviewer has said anything that personal about anything he's reviewed ever. And if my review of the cartoon saga is any indication, I'm a sucker for personal projects. So much so that, to be perfectly honest, this is going in a folder of videos I would show people if they were interested in becoming a reviewer. Because to be perfectly honest, I do feel that this is an important video for anyone to watch, not just as a reviewer, but just as a free thinking individual. And I seriously had to wait on Nostalgia Critics editorial on Is It Right to Nitpick to say that again. And it's for all those reasons why the review is so high on the list to begin with. I could do an outro about it, but I think it's best to just let it speak for itself. Number 4 Okay, I think it's about time we stopped being so serious and got a little bit humorous by looking at Voice of Reason's funniest review with one of the funniest mares alive, Keyframe. Yes, we have yet another comics review in Voice of Reason's rather short-lived comics month, joined by the one and only Keyframe providing her signature comedy. What can I even say about this one? This is Voice of Reason's funniest video easily. This is quite honestly the hardest I've ever laughed with a Voice of Reason review ever. From Keyframe getting drunker and drunker throughout the episode to just the snarky remarks at the comic itself, it's all very funny. And most of that is due to the interaction between Keyframe and Voice of Reason, Voice of Reason playing the straight man and Keyframe being... Well, basically Keyframe. But besides the great comedy, they bring up some really good points about the comic itself, presenting a great understanding of how comedy works as well as showing how it could have worked by bringing up comparisons to planes, trains, and automobiles. There's not really much else to say about it, so yeah, Voice of Reason's funniest review to date. I'm sticking by that. Well, you knew a voice and AY collaboration had to come out eventually, and of course, it would come to us from the 100th episode. I don't know what it is, but I don't think I've ever seen a single bad review of Slice of Life to this day. And honestly, if I had to rank them, this would be right next to Silver Quill, tied for number one. But it's less a review of the episode, though they do give a final rating for it, and more just an idea of what it represents, what it truly means for the fanbase, and how important of an episode it truly is. Why it'll probably never happen again in a long time. How it came to be in the first place, what with the show staff being exposed to the Brony community. And occasionally going over aspects of the episode. Honestly, while all that is very great and very interesting, what puts it up all the way to number 3 is the chemistry between A and Y and Voice of Reason. These two are easily in the top 3 of the best collab chemistry partners ever, and I will hear no evidence to the contrary on that. These two are just unbelievably incredible together. They balance each other out perfectly and provide just a great atmosphere to be around whenever they review. I could literally watch these two review an episode for hours on end and I would still be satisfied. Whenever these two get together to review an episode, it is truly a treat for every fan. And when you combine it with the 100th episode, episode a true treat for every Brony fan out there, you got something truly special. Alright, now that the fun's out of the way, it's time to get negative again with... Shout, shout, out. Number 2. So I'd like to imagine if I was in Voice of Reason's shoes, 
I'd probably be saying, is it too late for a mulligan? Yes, this right here was the very first Voice of Reason video I ever saw. Funny how the first video of his I ever saw was probably him at his most negative. And to be perfectly honest, that's what I loved about him. Yes, it was negative, but it was a snarky, quick-witted negative. The kind of negative I actually like. One of the reasons why I like the Nostalgia Critic. And keep in mind, I was still a dumbass high school who couldn't take negativity when I started watching this guy. Honestly, it was because of Voice of Reason's rather negative opinion on Friendship is Witchcraft that I started to open up to negative opinions a lot more and respect people for him. And for a good reason, because honestly, I think this is one of my favorite reviews of his, even if it's negative. He brought up a lot of great and well thought out points on where the series fails. Where it feels as a comedy, where it feels as an abridged series, where it feels as a subversion, and where it feels as a parody. He covers it all. Now, am I saying the review is perfect? Oh, hell no. If his follow up video is any indication, it does have its fair share of problems. But quite honestly, despite its problems, I still think this is Voice of Reason at his best. His best as a reviewer, his best as a snarky critic, his best as a fan of a bridge series, his best as an understander of comedy, and most of all, his best as a lover of MLP. Now I know what you're all probably thinking to yourself right now. Wait, what am I saying? I'm not a mind reader. I do know what I'm thinking right now though. If this is Voice of Reason at its best, then what could possibly top it? Well, number one. I'm not sure if what I'm about to say is going to be controversial or not, so I might as well make this clear. This is not Voice of Reason at his funniest. This is not Voice of Reason at his snarkiest. This is not Voice of Reason at his best as a critic. Heck, it's not even Voice of Reason at his absolute best. My number one is the beginning and ending of the Rift Saga. Why is it number one? Because of what it means to the analysis community. If you're wondering what I mean, Basically, way back during the end of Season 3, A&Y and Voice of Reason collaborated for Magical Mystery Cure. And as a result, started something I don't think they even remotely intended. They created the Rift, and as a result, provided an outlet for reviewers all over the community to collaborate together. To share thoughts and opinions on certain episodes or even certain aspects of the show or the fan community. And when the time came to finally close the Rift, he decided against it. Deciding that it was for the better that it be kept open. And you know what? He's honestly right, because from that simple action, Voice created something I don't think he even expected to make. Hell, to this day, that simple action of collaborating with A&Y and creating the Rift is still being used to this day as an excuse to collaborate with people. People use doors like the very one I have right now, reference the hallway of the hundreds of reviewers that are available to people at any time. How we're just a nice little stroll away from talking to any of our friends in the analysis community. And it's because of that, because of that collaboration with A&Y, because of the creation of the rift because of the choosing to keep it open why this is number one it doesn't show voice of reason at his best it shows the legacy he's left on this fandom and to me that's more powerful than any review he can give us because for me the rift isn't just some cafe not just some skype group not just some hallway of infinite reviewers it's not even a name to me the rift is an idea, an ideal that some way, shape, and form we are all connected. That no matter our opinion, no matter what we look like, heck, if we're not even a pony, that we are all connected by a love of pastel ponies. That we will have a love for this show going far beyond just a simple petty opinion or a simple disagreement. And yes, there has been drama. And yes, we've had people spin in our very faces with that exact same ideal, rejecting it. Taking even the littlest bit of negative feedback as a complete attack on someone. Or making videos for the sole purpose of pissing off the analysis community so much that they would leave them alone. But I really don't think that's enough to damage what the Rift stands for, because just like a legend, an ideal never truly dies, it just gets forgotten sometimes. Maybe just out of a moment of passion, or because, for lack of a better term, we're human. And yes, I'm talking about myself because I'm no saint when it comes to that either. I've called people bad critics and even when I try to apologize, I've had it spit back at me. Not by the very person I'm apologizing to, but by someone else. Even if it's not the very person I'm apologizing to, that can still hurt. And I've also made fun of people in the analysis community, even the people I've apologized to. But I never meant it out of malice. I never meant it to tarnish what the rift meant. When I called people bad critics, I did it out of a moment of passion. And when I realized that I had messed up, I took it back. And when I poke fun of people at the analysis community, I don't do it to get a rise out of them or to make them feel bad. I do it because I love them. Because I believe to truly love something is to poke fun at its more questionable moments or to call them out when they do something bad. And that's an ideal I think the Rift also embodies. Yes, we may harshly review some episodes, but in the end, we just do it because we love the show. We love talking about it. We love sharing our opinions. We love sharing our opinions with all of our friends. And we love working together to share our opinions. Because to me, that's what the Rift means to me. 
It's family. Because the rift embodies the Bornaosis community, the Bornaosis community has been like a second family to me. We may bicker, we may argue, but in the end, we still have an unbreakable bond, one thing that connects us all. And that one thing is My Little Pony, and the one word that describes that connection is the rift. And people can disagree with me, people can call me naive, people can call me stupid, people can call me every name in the dictionary to try and make me feel bad. Quite frankly, I pity you, because I think you're missing out. Voice of Reason. Wherever you go in this world, I want you to remember that you were more than just some other reviewer in the analysis community. You were someone that made an idea that brought us together. And for that, you will always be remembered. At least in my heart anyway. Wherever you're going in this world, I wish you the best of luck. And Godspeed, Voice of Reason. We'll miss you. I'm the Watchful Pony, and Voice of Reason's Rift is why I brony. I'll see you guys next time. In the dead of the night Instead of searching for the light yourself Reflecting on the moments you lost The moments you thought would finally be the end